Hi there, let's talk about how to make this uh, scene look good, light it up and all that. So let's get to work. So let's create a light for this model. I always like to use the area lights because you can shape them and they're fun to use. So I'm going to change the shape from a square to an ellipse and then scale it down a little bit like that. And I usually like to lay down the lights in the back to create the silhouette of my character. I'm going to change one setting. Under shadows, I'm going to set the bias to zero. Now let's duplicate it and put it on the other side. And try to... Now my focus is really on this area, especially on like the ear and a little bit of the hair. And then I'm going to create two more lights on each side because this is a huge character. So it's going to need a bit more than the usual three point lighting. And then duplicate it one more time. All right, so I got four lights going on here. I will change the colors in a second, but for now I'm going to set all my lights before I do that. So now I'm going to create a new light, area light, or you could duplicate one of the existing ones. Change the shape to an ellipse. Now this, it honestly already looked like a good, good shot if that's what you wanted. But I wanna like really create some harsh, hard shadows on uh, on his face here so i'm going to scale down the light you can see that nice specular on his eyes too i'm gonna to put it a bit above his head i gotta watch the glove here because um create some nice uh, get some nice specular out of that as well Say for this glove, that one more light going on. Make sure you save your project, by the way, especially when you're when you have your scene rendering at all times. You don't want something bad to happen. Now, the amount of lights you have to create completely depends on what type of shot this is. If this was an animated shot, I would not put lights for his gloves here because. The minute he moves his gloves, the you know the, the lighting setup is basically broken. So I would look at the animation, see what works, and then light it from there on out. So, real quick, turn this on. Um, your model won't look good if you already did a poor job texturing it. So I textured this model in Substance Painter. I probably should have said this at the beginning, but uh, making sure your character and your objects are in real world scale helps a lot. So when I just started out in Blender, I would sometimes have a character or an object that was huge, but I didn't realize that until I would light up the character and I would set the intensities to crazy amounts like 4,000, 5,000, just to realize later on that the scale was off. So make sure you scale up your characters properly. All right, so there's one more thing I'd like to create before I move on and that is a backdrop. So I will create a backdrop by creating a plane. Scale it up, let me turn this off for a second. Go into edit mode, into edge select mode, grab one edge, and extrude it upwards like that. And then hit Control 2 or just add the subdivision um, surface modifier. I'm gonna set it to like level three or four. Like that, and set it to four, that works. Shade smooth and push it to the back. Make sure it fills up the camera, the camera view and then Put it in there and then what i'm going to do is create another light area light i'm going to create make it an ellipse and scale it like that and i'm going to make it quite big here 
and it creates like a nice little spotlight effect on the backdrop. Now the background is too light because the backdrop doesn't have a material yet. So select your backdrop in the shader editor, which I have open right here. So I create a new material and I set the roughness to about like 0.8. You can turn the color into anything really. You know, give it some life. I personally like to use darker colors like that. But uh, do as you please, of course. All right, that looks about right. So now you can change your colors um, or not. You have to just play around with it and uh, yeah, definitely change them individually. And especially when you change uh, the color of your light, don't go too overboard with them. And also, especially with uh, the front light here, uh, just right above his face, make sure the colors here are very subtle. You don't want to stray away too much from the default white light because it's going to look weird. You're going to like, unless he's like in some sort of like club or setting or whatever, you can go with these extreme colors. But other than that, make sure you like, you can change it, but don't go like too crazy with it because you'll be able to see the changes very quickly on like his body and whatnot. So I'm going to speed this part up. Um, but you'll be able to see the difference. All right, you probably saw me going from using cooler colors to a warmer setting. It really comes down to how you feel about the shot like you're basically the director of the shot right it's, it's down to your decision what looks right or what would you want to tell with this uh with the shot so let's zoom in on the character for a second because his skin looks like dental clay if we turn up the subsurface you see what happens his skin becomes softer so I already tested out what works best with this character. That's why I put it in this value node. Let me just touch that. And yeah, there's a difference before and after. Okay. And there's another thing I like to change, which is his hair. His hair doesn't have any subsurface scattering. Now, when you use cycles, you do have the luxury of using the principled hair BSDF, but not when you're using EV. Well, let me show you a quick hair setup. So I'm using a curves info node and it will give you all this, all these cool options. So I'm gonna use the intercept, put that in a color ramp node to get more of those darker colors for the root put that in a mix node and set the colors plug that into the base color of the principal bsdf the magic trick is to add a add shader node and then add a translucent bsdf plug it like this then when you bring the two together I'll show you the difference but turn this to black versus See, like right here. Now, make sure you don't use very bright colors in this translucent node. Because this is basically like your subsurface slider. So you gotta, you gotta make sure it's somewhere in the middle or somewhere below. I think that looks about right. It looks good. The next video will be about how to create realistic bokeh using Eevee all in real time. And you'll be able to see it on this channel so make sure you hit the subscribe you know the bell icon whatever the whole thing or not just make sure you come back to this channel for that all right see you in the next one